Okay, so in this video, we're going to install iPerf3 on a Synology NAS using Docker. So to start off with, let's just open up the Docker app on our Synology NAS. And we're going to go and click on registry and we're going to search for iPerf3 and hit enter. So we have a couple of options to choose from. And most of the time, most people will just select the image in the registry that has the most stars. So let's have a look at that one. But what we're going to also do is have a look at this one here. So I'm just going to click on this blue arrow and just open up the Docker Hub pages for both of these. And I'm just going to put one to the right hand side of the screen and one to the left so we can compare them. So the image on the left hand side of the screen is the one with the most stars and you can see it's got the most pulls. So that's over 10 million. And the one on the right has over 1 million pulls and less stars than the one on the left. So if we just click on the Docker files just to compare them quickly. And we just scroll down. So you can see the one on the right is based on Alpine Linux, which is a compact distro of Linux. So it's a lot smaller. And actually, this will use less memory when we're running our container. And the one on the left is based on Debian, which is actually going to be a lot larger. The other thing that we need to look at is this one exposes both port 5201 for TCP and UDP. The reason why it does that is the default port for iperf servers is port 5201 and this container will expose both of these protocols on this port. So the other main difference is if you look down at the bottom so we've got on the one on the right hand side we've got entry point which is iperf and command which is dash s. So what this is saying is the entry point into our container is what is going to be run when we start our container. So that's iperf3 and the default command that's going to be run is dash s. So put iperf3 in server mode. So we're running a server listening for connections. Whereas the Debian based image only has an entry point of iperf3. Now that's not such a big deal as you'll see later. What we can do within the Docker app on our Synology is we can actually create a container with a default command from this image anyway. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to get both of them just so you can have a look at some of the differences. So let's get the first one, download that and get the second one which is based on Alpine and download that. And yes, the latest tag should be fine. So now if we click on our images, they should almost be finished. Well, the Alpine one has finished and the Debian based image has just finished. So you can see how large the image is for the Debian version. So it's 126 megabytes and the Alpine version is six megabytes. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create containers from both of these images and run them at the same time so we can see the differences. So let's start with the Alpine one first. So all we need to do is select it and click launch and then click on advanced settings. And you can enable this to auto restart. And let's just go into port settings. So we want to map our local port, which is going to be 5201 to 5201 on our container. And we're going to do the same for UDP as well. So 5201. Just bear in mind that when we set up the Debian container, we'll actually have to choose different ports as we've just used 5201 for this. So let's just have a look in links. Nothing there that we need to really do. And we've got command here. So you can see the default command is dash S. And we could actually change that here to say dash C and just run a client. But then we'd need to put in the IP address of a server that we want to do a test against. So we're going to leave that as dash S which was the default. So just click apply and click next. And yes, I want to run this container after we finish with this wizard. So just click apply. And if we have a look at containers, you can see that we have this running container. Now just pay attention to the amount of RAM that it uses. So let's set up the other container. So go to images and we're setting up the Debian one now. So select it and click launch. And we're going to click advanced settings. And then we're going to go to port settings and we're going to map port 5202 because 5201 was already taken by our other server. And notice how it's only got TCP as a protocol that it will accept. Now we can expose another port 
on our container. So we can just click add and let's just say this is uh, 5201 and we can change this to UDP. Just click down there, UDP, and we'll just map uh, 5202 to that. And if we click on environment, you'll notice that this field is empty. So if you remember previously, let's just show you on that page. So this is the Debian Docker file, and you can see that it's only got entry point, whereas our Alpine Docker file had entry point, and then it had a default command, which is dash S. So that showed up in our, when we were setting up our Alpine container. So for this, if we want this container to start as a server, we just have to put dash S in here and then click apply and click next. And yes, we want to run this container. So click apply. And if we go over to containers, you can see that it's running. Now just pay attention to the amount of RAM that this container is using compared to the Alpine container. So not only does it take up more disk space for the image, it also uses more RAM while it's running. So let's just do a bandwidth test to this container first. So I'm gonna open up a terminal on my desktop and let's just push this to the side and let's just push this to the other side. So there we go. Um, I'm gonna click on details. In fact, let's make this a little bit bigger first, make this a tiny bit smaller. So these are the details of the Debian image and I can't seem to, there we go. Okay, uh, let's put that there and let's just make this take up half of the screen. Okay, so if we click on logs, you can see that our server is listening and it says listening on 5201. So let's just run an iperf test with this. So iperf3 on our local machine. In fact, let me just make this a tiny bit smaller as well. iperf3 dash c, the IP address of our server, which is 192.168.1.43. And we have to select the port because we changed it. So dash p and it was 5202. And if we hit enter, you can see that we're getting a response and we're running a test. And if I just refresh the logs for this, you can see that it is actually running this test on our Debian container. So that's finished. Let's just refresh the full logs. So you can see the logs there. And let's just get out of that. And let's have a look at the logs for our Alpine container. So click on this, click details, and we wanna click on logs. So you can see our server is listening. Now this one is listening on external port 5201. So we're gonna run the same test again, and we're gonna run that against port 5201. So same IP address, different port number, because we assigned this port number for this container. So if we just hit enter now, you can see that's running. And if I refresh the logs, you can see it definitely is this container that we're talking to. And let's just refresh because it's finished. Refresh one more time. And there we go. So let's just close these now. So you can see the difference between these two containers and they're both doing the same thing. So let's just shut down the Debian container and delete it. So we just shut it down first and then we can delete it. So actions delete. You can also do this all over the command line on your Synology NAS. You just have to SSH in and then run Docker commands as root. So I might as well just show you that quickly. So you have to make sure that you've got SSH set up on your Synology NAS, um, which I do. So I'm just gonna SSH into it. So uh, what was it? 192.168.1.43. Connection refused. Okay, that's because my SSH port is different. So it's, um, there we go. And I'm just gonna enter my password and then just log in as root. So enter my password again. Okay, so let's have a look at our running containers. So that would be Docker, uh, container, ls. Don't need the dash A because it's a running container. And let me just make that a tiny bit smaller so it fits on one line. So it just makes it easier for me to read. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do is just move this to the top of the screen. 
Okay, so you can see that this container is running, so let's stop it. So I'm just going to copy this container ID and I'm just going to type in docker container uh, rm and the container ID, hit enter, and it says it cannot be removed because it's a running container. So we first have to stop it. So let's just change this, stop. So the container should stop and it has, it just takes a second for, there we go, for the um, Docker app to refresh. So that's done. And now we can just remove it. So there we go, we've gotten rid of our Docker container over the command line. And let me just start up a local iperf server. So I'm gonna open up a new terminal. Okay, so iperf3, so that's running on my local machine now, dash s. So you can see now we have a server listening on port 5201 on our local machine. And we're just gonna create our Docker container from the command line. So if we just type in Docker images, um, ls, and I meant to say Docker image list. There we go. So we have a list of our images. And what we want to do is create a new container based on our Alpine image, which is this version here. So we're just gonna type in Docker, run double dash name and we're going to call it let's just call it uh, my container actually my iperf container let's do that iperf3 container so that's the name that our container will have and then we need to enter in the name of the image so that's m uh, labe slash iperf3 and now we can enter in commands. So let's use dash C and I'm going to test it with our local server. So that's 192.168.1.98, which is the IP address of the machine I'm on right now and hit enter. And you'll see a container pop up here. And you can see that we are actually running a test. And if we just select our container here and have a look at the logs, in fact, let me just make this bigger. So uh, make that bigger. There we go. So you can see that we actually connected to this host, which is this machine over here. We just kill the server. So that's basically it. That's how you can set up an iperf3 server on a Synology NAS using Docker. I hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching. Goodbye.